In this video, I'd like to start describing our first 3D tool, which is Extrude. We'll go and get started. I'm going to come into my Examples folder and create a new document. To be able to use Extrusion, I need to have a shape, and as long as it's a crow's profile, that's all I need. So I'm going to create a new sketch on my front plane. I'm going to go ahead and square it up, and I'm going to start with the center point rectangle. Go ahead and click on my origin, and whatever my height and width are going to be. I'd like to make something that looks kind of like a stick of gum. So I'll go fairly thin and fairly wide. I'll go ahead and finish the sketch. I'll put it back into 3D mode, and I'm going to come up to Extrude. When I have Extrude, the first thing it wants to know is the faces and sketched regions that I would like to extrude. As long as it's a closed region, one of those regions that was shaded in, then I can extrude it. So I can go ahead and grab that. And the first thing I want to notice is that I can either go forwards or backwards. Um, I like to use this little arrow here to change it from forward to backwards. But you can also just grab this arrow directly on the screen and you can pull it forwards or backwards. So now I can go ahead and decide that I would like for it to be, I don't know, about yay long. I can also go ahead and change it to something specific. Uh, and then I can go ahead and accept that extrusion. To be able to edit that extrusion later, if I'd like it to be a little bit shorter, all I have to do is come over to my browser bar over here, find Extrude 1, and I can either double click it, or I can right click on it and edit. Once I'm in there, I can go ahead and change that to whatever I want it to now be, or I can change the numbers. And then same thing, when I finish Sketch, it will update. But what else can this Extrude do? If I'm inside Extrude, I also have the ability to draft. If I select draft, it will allow me to taper the part. Um, it's doing it evenly off of my original sketch. So right now I'm at 3 degrees, and I wish I kind of had an arrow where I could pull that dynamically and I could see exactly what it's going to look like. Um, but for the most part, all you have to do is type in a new number and then hit enter. It won't completely close out of this box, so you can at least see what it's going to look like. Um, and then 10 degrees and so on. If I put it back to like 3 degrees, and I select this opposite direction, it works just like the top one did. If I select the opposite direction, instead of tapering out or drafting out, it will then draft in. You do need to be careful when you're going in, because you can accidentally make it too small. It will go ahead and shrink the part to match whatever degrees you have, but you need to know that it will at least go ahead and do that. Okay, well what else can this extrude do? If I'm inside the extrude, I also have the option to change it from blind to symmetric. I am going to go ahead and take the draft off right now, just so we can take a look at it. So this symmetric will be a mirror. Whatever happens to one side will happen to both sides. I use that quite a bit when I've got something that needs to be centered onto a part. I did want to go ahead and turn this draft box on to show you that I can go ahead and draft symmetrically as well. So if I do a 3D three degree draft, I can either go out or I can go in from it symmetrically. One last thing that I can do with Extrude, I'm going to create a new sketch on the top. I'm going to go ahead and create a new shape and I'll finish that sketch. Extrude will allow me to add shapes in addition to the extrusion that I already have. I can also select Remove. If I select Remove, then it will go ahead and subtract that from the part. Typically, if I'm going to put a hole all the way through something, instead of allowing it to go blind in a specific dimension, I'm going to change the word blind to Through All. And then no matter how thick the part is, even if I change it later, it'll go ahead and be Through All. Just let me just show you that. So if I come back into my Extrusion 1, and that's going to be, oops, I need to go back into the sketch go back into sketch one and I make that considerably bigger it will automatically update the location of my sketch and because I said through all it will always be through all um, so I don't have the chance of accidentally creating a hole that was stuck with a blind dimension that won't go through all and that's really the basics of the extrude tool the extrude tool will give you the option of giving something depth it will allow you to taper that depth either in or out, and it will allow you to go ahead and um, do that symmetrically from one side to the other side. And welcome to Extrude.